Hi folks, we've got a new front-end framework on the team, but the thing is, it's only HTML. So the new library or framework is called HTMX and it's just simply just HTML and it makes you use no JavaScript, like literally zero JavaScript code to build web applications and user interfaces. So HTMX is a new front-end framework that adds superpowers to your HTML. It's not exactly a front-end framework, it's more of like a library that allows you to add functionalities on top of HTML so you can eliminate JavaScript completely. So here, if you leave in the introduction in here, it gives you like, oh, HTML gives you access to AJAX, CSS transitions, website, Sockets, service and events, and all of those are actually directly inside of your HTML file. And of course, it's going to use attributes. So if you remember the old good uh, AngularJS, like AngularJS v1, where it just used attributes everywhere, where it allowed us to do something like this, where we can do, oh, initialize the application, or maybe the click in here. So you can do this is actually could be, you know, you, you map a single click to a function. But of course, it's a little different because AngularJS allowed us to use like JavaScript alongside that one, while HTMX is completely independent from JavaScript, it doesn't actually recommend using JavaScript at all because everything that you should do, everything pretty much should be done through HTML through the attributes and the added syntax that HTMX actually provides. And it's actually only 14 kilobyte minified and gzip. It's like completely dependency free and extensible and it supports Internet Explorer 11. Of course, you can read about the motivation in here, how it works, and they have like actually a really nice small book in here. I haven't read that one, but it looks nice. And if you look at this at GitHub, it has almost 22 K stars and everybody, like literally everybody is trying to actually make a big of a deal with this. So in this video, I'm trying to actually go through and actually bring HTMX and try to build a simple application with it and see the cons and pros of HTMX and does it actually eliminate JavaScript out of the picture? And if you compare it to something like React, is it good? So I tried to visualize a small diagram in here of how like the evolution of the front end development going from the vanilla HTML back in the days to where we are now. So apparently it looks like we started with nice vanilla HTML with CSS, everything was good. We were making good website with HTML, and CSS, some JavaScript, that was pretty nice. Then we actually all of a sudden decided to invent something called jQuery, which has been very helpful in the past years before, you know, the new era of front end development frameworks like Angular and React, everything was pretty nice with jQuery. It was a pretty nice library that allowed you to do pretty much everything that would be harder to do in vanilla JavaScript and DOM. Then all of a sudden Angular came out out of the picture in here from Google and they invented the Angular V1 particularly. And it was pretty nice. Of course, we had to do a lot of stuff. We have syntactical sugar on top of HTML. We can like call functions from our HTML. We can call our JavaScript functions from our HTML very easily using attributes. We can have scopes, we can have router, so many things that was pretty nice. And now we're at the era of React. And of course, we are all the React lovers. We all love working with React components and everything that goes with the React ecosystem. That's pretty nice. So far, so good and everything. But for some reason, some guys or some folks actually decided to invent HTMX, which I'm not against or anything. It actually looks pretty nice. But we found ourselves actually going around in circles and actually finding a lot of complexities and adding a lot of complexities. Like, for example, if you try to build a simple application, a simple web page, I mean, you have to install a lot of stuff, building systems, CI, CD, uh, build and deploy, and so many things going on. So why not just simplify things and just go back to the root in here and actually invent something that is called HTMX. So it's just simple HTML, like that's literally what it is, with an added syntactical sugar X in here with some attributes, some functionalities that actually eliminate the use of JavaScript. So you can easily and quickly set up your web pages and get started with them without that much of complexity. So that's as far as I can see, as far as that works with HTMX and build some project and try to build some web pages with it. So everything looks good so far and everything is pretty, pretty simple. Now I went through and actually used HTMX to build this really simple application. I'm not going to say it's an application, it's just a web page that when you click on a button here, it goes into an API outside, fetches the users from that particular API and renders. So simply in here, if I click on that one, it's going to prompt me for us. Oh, are you sure which fetch the new list of users? You click OK and the API is going to return the new ones. It's going to render the users in here with images and like, you know, the username, the email of the user and so on and so forth. It's pretty simple. So that's, of course, that's, we've been doing 
doing that in React and many other libraries forever now. So let's go ahead and see how we actually build this using HTMX to understand how actually the HTMX works behind the scenes. So if you go to the documentation in here, you can read like HTMX in a nutshell to understand more about it, but we're more interested about the installing. So if you go HTMX in here is a dependency free and you can as simple as that because we're back in the old days of HTML and no longer need to install anything on NPM or host or bundle anything with pack or any bundle like Vite or something. All we simply need to do is just use a script tag in here to point to the HTMX version you want and you put it inside of your HTML kind of like file and you're good to go. I mean, this is actually the recommended way to do it. Well, of course, you can actually go ahead and dump like a download a copy in here, like a minified copy and point to it, which I think is a pretty good one if for more of a production thing. But of course, you still got the choice to use npm in here or any other package manager to install it locally. And maybe you want to have and use it with Webpack. So for me, of course, I'm going to head over with the simplest approach. I'm going to use the script tag in here like the all good days. And I'm just going to go ahead and just copy the script tag in here and put it inside of my HTML file. So here I have my simple projects in here. So I'll go to index.html. And this is actually where all the magic happens. And this is actually where all the magic is happening. So simply in here, I'm loading Tailwind CSS first from the script tag. And I have like HTMX, I'm going through the latest to HTMX, and I'm actually loading a couple of extensions because HTMX is actually the code library and you can extend it with some extension. So like in here, I'm extending it with a client side templates that allows us to use these templates. And I'm using a template called mustache. It's pretty much like handlebars. And if you're familiar with like HTML templates, mustache is, is the very basic one. Okay, we, we don't need that line of code in there. And that's it. And it's just like as simple as that HTML is just simply an HTML file, you have HTML code inside of it. And all there is added in you is some extra parameters or attributes that actually allow you to do pretty much everything. So let's get started and actually understand how this button works because buttons are a very crucial part of any application because they are the way to interact like for users to interact with the web page, for example, this button will actually fetch users data from an API endpoint and actually grab it up and render it on a specific Civic container. So to better understand that we have got a simple button here. So it's, it looks like a pretty simple but it has a lot of added attributes like a lot of HTMX added attributes for this. And all of them like literally all of them are prepended and start with HX. So for HTMX, any attribute you have and you find it starting with HX, you're going to immediately know that this is an HTMX attribute. So for example, here, we're telling it to do a get request to this API when it's clicked. So H HX gets in here, we'll actually send their API request like a get Get request, get HTTP request to this API endpoint when the button is clicked. And of course, you can do the same thing for like HX post or put or uh, I don't know, delete or something, any HTTP method, all of them are actually put in here. Um, for the confirm in here, we're telling it to actually whenever we click, we displays this uh, warning on top in here, we can click OK or cancel. So just like a small confirmation, which is good. And now for the swapping in here, we're telling it how we swapped by default, it's always going to be inner HTML. So I'm going to leave it for inner HTML for now. And the target is actually telling it which div or elements for any other element in here that is inside of the DOM with like in here, it's clear so we're using C CSS selectors with an ID. So we're telling it an element that has an ID of content, which is this div element right over here. So anything is just going to go ahead and grab this target and actually replace all the vids in our HTML. We'll go ahead and replace all the content inside of that one and put the contents it fetches from the basically from the API inside of the dev instance. So that's basically how rendering works. And of course, we got some like indicator in here to do a loading. So whenever the API starts, actually is going to go ahead and do an opacity one on this indicator. And when it's done, it's going to turn the opacity zero. So that's why we're just doing like ID in here. And we're giving it this HTMX indicator inside of the class. So the CSS would work with opacity zero and one actually can toggle between the both of them. And last but not least in here, we're using some mustache custom template in here to render the list of users. Of course, because I already said in here, we're using mustache in here, and we're actually telling it to use like this extension, the client side template extension from HTMX particularly. And of course, if we go down here, because we're pointing to foo, and foo is actually a template, so an HTML template in here. And of course, everything inside of that one is actually using a mustache syntax, a mustache template syntax in here to render stuff. So for example, we're telling it to access the data object and inside of it, we're accessing the user's array. And we're like looping through it and actually rendering a div for every single user on the user's array. So simply in here, we're rendering a div for every single user with like an A in here, hyperlink to click on it, and an image of the 
the user and just just accessing the attributes of the properties instead of the user. So each object has a property of first name, email, username. So all of those are actually like using this template literal sort of like brackets to access those particular variables. And here we just telling it to end and close the scope. And as simple as that, we're looping through all of the users, we're rendering a div for every single user, we're accessing all the properties of that particular objects, and we render it. That's basically the same thing as you do react like react dot map or values dot map, and you go through and actually map everything and you render a div for every single one of them and actually just access everything. And that's what actually allows us to when we click on the button in here, we get this confirmation and it's going to go ahead and render every single user. So for instance, if I go back and actually remove this image and actually go back in here, click on the button right again, click confirm, I'm not going to get an image because I completely removed the image from here. And of course, if I put it back, go back in here, uh, do the button and click on it, there you go, we're going to find the image. And we added a simple and actually was able to do a multi page sort of uh, like a website in here, where you can actually click on this image and added this uh, hyperlink with an href that goes to the single page.html. And it pushes to the URL in here and actually does the outer HTML. So it kind of like replaces everything inside of that one and have this single page user HTML, which is a simple another HTML page in here that has a body and everything. But it actually loads the data of a single user like it goes to users and one and it loads the first one in here when the body in here so it loads it on the body so like whenever the web page loads immediately once it goes like through in this one actually loads the data of a particular user so if I go back into it in here and try to click on a single user it does like some refreshing in here it goes to single page user and actually displays all the users data in here for you which looks pretty pretty nice and it's actually a small proof now of course there's a lot more to HTMX than just a simple page transition and and loading data and everything from like animations in here really nice animations with CSS transitions and stuff like that for example this is a simple example to progress bar in here for example if you need like to do a progress bar there's a small demo in here for that one that shows you how to do a progress bar maybe or a bunch of other UI examples in here and how to edit, finish scrolling, uh, you know, file upload, dialogues in here for the browser and bootstrap, uh, sortable keyboard shortcuts, so much more. And all of that, literally all of that can be done without even writing a single line of code of JavaScript, which of course, pretty, pretty nice. And sometimes it's actually pretty, pretty handy. So the way I actually see HTMX is actually very lightweight and actually very, very lightweight. You don't even need a single line of JavaScript to type all you actually need to deal with is simple HTML with some added like attributes you can easily learn about. And most interestingly in here is actually very easy to learn. I mean, the learning curve and actually how you can get started and build an application is just like is within minute literally. So that's actually what I like about it. But in my opinion, I think it's actually more of a good for a small little applications in here, or maybe just to quickly integrate with a server you already have to like make a small web pages or whatever. But what I think it's actually for bigger large scale projects and front end projects in here with advanced UI components and a big team sort of collaborating together and working together. I don't actually see it coming near that like modern frameworks, uh, libraries like I don't know, maybe react view solid and many others. It's actually very, very complicated to compete. I don't think it's actually meant to compete. I don't think HTML is meant to be compared, like according to those big frameworks and libraries, it's more of like a lighter weight and advanced version of HTML that makes you do super powerful things. So thank you guys for watching this been HTML and see you guys hopefully in the next ones.